On a summer day in 2020, I walked down the path I knew so well, winding down the Hudson River, the water glistening and the cool breeze making wearing my mask just a little more comfortable than the usual hot misery. As I continued to walk, I stumbled upon a group of young friends, their smiles wide, their song lifting to the air, harmony mixing between them as they sang in joyous cadences, their faces uncovered. Normally, this encounter with unbridled joy being expressed through song would have had me wanting to join in, to slow down, and to listen for a while. But that day, what I felt was horror. I looked on in astonishment, wondering if they had heard the news. Singing is now a super spreading activity, and the seemingly joyous musical act they were taking part in was now deemed dangerous and irresponsible in the presence of others. I quickened my pace, knowing that the memory of this would stick with me, now that for the first time, I had equated danger with the activity I loved engaging with the most. This is the reality we now live in. The logistics and precautions with this virus have changed the nature of the livelihood of so many who call music a profession, and singing especially a passion. Broadway remains dark, successful shows closing up shop as the economic reality sets in after almost a year of no performances. Singing in harmony is a pipe dream within our synagogues without putting hours and hours into virtual choral videos unless you have a grand sanctuary such as the one I am standing in where distancing is possible. We are certainly the exception. As I read the Torah portion this week, Mishpatim, two words that don't usually stand out as much grabbed my attention as if I were seeing them for the first time. Out of the wilderness and after the receiving of the Ten Commandments, the Israelites were now ready to commit to their God. They were now able to read the fine print of the contract that would bind them together and they were ready to establish a set of moral laws that would bind them as a community. The verse states that upon hearing Moses' retelling of the commandments, the Israelites answered in kol echad, one voice, that they will na'ase v'nishma, act and listen. In much rabbinic commentary, the phrase na'ase v'nishma is unpacked, turned over and over because of the significance of the order of the words. That the Israelites committed to action first, before listening. In my reading, however, my eyes drifted back to the words kol echad, the notion that the entirety of the Israelite community in attendance answered the call of this covenant in one singular voice, not an amalgamation of voices delayed on Zoom, one voice. As I began to ruminate on this, I reflected on how many things have changed since this pandemic began in regards to being able to sing together as a community in harmony and in prayer. I remember that almost one year ago, the rumors were floating around at HUC where I'm studying to become a cantor. Will the practica be canceled this week? Will we be sent home from class? Not knowing the severity of what the reality of this virus was, I hoped and prayed that we would get to sing the choral songs we had been preparing for weeks for the practica. We got the announcement that we would indeed have school that day, singing together the beautiful works of Cantor William Charlin, the harmonies interlocking, yet there was also an uneasiness of the unknown creeping in at the same time. That Wednesday was the last time we were all in the same physical space, able to sing as an HUC community in kol echad, in one voice, as the following day was canceled and our school decided to make the shift to Zoom. 
So much of what is fundamental to our services in Judaism is the voice of the congregation. Hearing your voices, all of our voices together, whether it be in the responsive readings, the collective amens, the singing of the Shema or the chanting of the Vahavta, that is what makes this community so rich and vibrant on a Friday night. Don't get me wrong, the amazing musicians and clergy contrib contribute, but without that congregational voice, many may have questioned what we were to do without that kol echad in the absence of that communal voice. Pre-pandemic Central was a place where the congregational voice was welcomed, encouraged, and sought out. But now, because of technology, we were asking people to no longer have their voices heard by the rest of the community. Yet, that is not truly the reality of what happened. The Jewish community pivoted with the introduction of the mute button. As I am writing, I am sure there are rapid fire comments being added into the Facebook, the Facebook chat, people replying back and forth, wishing each other Shabbat Shalom, remarking on the beauty the musicians provide, or the masterful leadership of my future colleagues on the BMO with me. In addition to writing and comments, you are singing in your homes and without knowing it, contributing to an interconnected, sacred web of voices as you read and sing the prayers with us. This web stretching from home to home unites us all, our voices providing this prayer network that would have never existed unless this medium had forced us to mute our kol echad, our communal voice. Sometimes it can even be a relief that you're not able to be heard. You can sing as loud as you want, as off-key as you want, uh, with passion and fervor, without worrying what the person next to you is thinking. Not that you should worry about that when you're in the sanctuary. The Israelites answered with one voice, with kol echad, that they would carry out God's commandments and commit to their covenant. We're unable to hear our communal voice right now, but that does not mean there are hundreds of people watching this right now in their homes, singing their hearts out, praying to their God and creating a kind of prayer network in essence, finding that one voice together just across space and time. I long for the day when we are able to be in this sanctuary all together sitting together in the pews, still honoring our ancestors' covenant to na'aseh v'nishma, to act and to listen according to God's will. That day, we will pray and sing together as one voice.